Hey guys, Ben from Back Photography here, and today we are looking at a natural light photo shoot I did in a national park with a model Storm Brooks Hamilton. I'll leave her Instagram handle in the description below if you're interested in checking out more of her work. So today we did a, as I said, natural light portrait session with my Sony a7R2 and Sigma 85mm 1.4. Now the 85mm 1.4 is a fantastic portrait lens, gives you a nice amount of compression because of its long focal length. It's a really nice low aperture so you can blow out the backgrounds as well and it's super, super sharp. So you can get really, really clean, sharp images out of that lens. We decided to do this photo shoot out the front of a beautiful yellow wattle bush and the reason we did that is because we thought that the yellow and the green really complemented each other in the scene. So by that what I mean is the yellow flowers on the bush and the green jacket she was wearing as well as her green hair provided a really nice set of contrasting colours in the scene. Because it was a pretty shaded area it meant that we were getting really nice soft light in the scene. There wasn't any harsh sunlight coming through because it was really late in the evening so the sun was really low down it meant that we didn't get any harsh shadows or highlights and that always makes for really nice soft portraits. So the equipment I used today for this photo shoot was a Sony a7R2, Sigma 85mm 1.4 and my Sigma MC11 adapter. For some of the photos I showed you at the start of this video I actually used my Canon 6D just because my Sony a7R2 has been playing up with the autofocus recently but most of the shots I got today were with a Sony a7R2. So this is the photo that I'm going to be focusing on in this video and what we're going to go through today is the posing techniques, the camera settings as well as the post processing I did on this image as well. I'm going to leave the raw file for this image in Dropbox and then I'm going to put the Dropbox link in the description. So if you would like to edit along while I'm showing you what I did, then go to my description and just download the image from there. So first of all, let's talk about her pose. First thing I got her to do was grab hold of her jacket and then pull it tight to her back and that really accentuates her curvature, the curvature of her body. So you can see how skinny her waist is as well as the curvature of her lower back and shoulders. Next thing I got her to do was twist her whole body about 45 degrees away from where the camera was pointing, just to accentuate again the curvature of her body. And also it means that when she's looking away like she's now, you can see the sharpness of her jawline as well as, because she's turned slightly to the side, you can see how high her cheekbones are as well. And that's always a really flattering position for men and women if you're looking to get a slender looking portrait. So here's a lighting diagram of the entire scene. I've just put where the sun was. The sun was so low though that there wasn't really any sunlight shining into the scene. And that made for a really nice soft flat lighting condition which meant that I could mess around with the lighting in post-production and get exactly the right lighting that I want. The camera settings I used for this image was a shutter speed of 1 1 60th of a second, a aperture of 1.4 which is the widest aperture you can get on this lens and an ISO of 100. So the reason I used a shutter speed of 1 1 60th of a second is because it was getting quite dark and I wanted to use a low ISO so I boosted the shutter speed as low down as I could get it and where I could still be confident that I wasn't going to shake the camera and cause motion blur in the image because when you're shooting at a low shutter speed motion blur um, creeps up easier because as the shutter stays open and someone moves it's capturing someone in the position they were originally and the position they're in when they moved. So keeping at a high shutter speed is better if you're wanting crisp images. So 160th was about as far as I wanted to push it before I was worried that I'd get motion blur from me shaking the camera and from my model moving. I used an aperture of 1.4 because I really like the creamy, swirly, out of focus background for these sorts of portraits. And I used an ISO of 100 because that's the base ISO of my camera, and that meant for that meant I could get really clean, crisp images without much noise. So let's jump into Photoshop and see the editing techniques I used to complete this image. So we're in Camera Raw here. The first thing I did was add some overall uh, clarity to the entire image, just to make the model pop from the background and make her stand out in a more three-dimensional way. The next thing I did was add some vibrance and then just change the color balance because it was looking a little bit purple and a little bit yellow. So I just dropped the blues a little bit and then uh, dropped the purples as well to make it a little bit more green. Next thing I did was I smashed the saturation of the blues and cyans just because that cyan was a really bold and bright color and I think it really made this image just by being so vibrant and complementing the yellow flowers in the background. 
So yeah, boosting the cyans as well as the blues. Blues not so much because it was mainly a cyan jacket and cyan colored hair. And then I also boosted the yellows as well just because I thought the flowers in the background were super pretty. Next thing I did was just added a little bit of extra clarity and a bump in exposure for the eyes. You've got to be careful when you're adding exposure and clarity to eyes just because you don't want to overdo it and make them look like laser beams. So just adding, you know, five to ten points on the exposure and the clarity can really make the eyes stand out and pop and look awesome. Next thing I did was added a whole bunch of black and exposure to my brush and then used the brush as a selection tool just so I could see exactly where on the image I was actually selecting. And basically what I'm doing here is just selecting all the skin so that I can reduce the clarity in the skin. And then when I reduce the clarity, it smooths out the skin and makes it look more aesthetically pleasing. Just gets rid of any blemishes or um, imperfections in the skin and overall just makes it look more aesthetically pleasing. So I'm just going to fast forward this bit because it does take a little bit of time um, and it's all the same stuff really. So just after you've selected all the skin, um, you drop the clarity. So I'm just going to speed this bit up and then we'll get to the next step. So I normally drop the clarity by about 30 points depending on the scene just because you don't want to drop them too much because it makes the face look flat and also you don't want the skin to be super super clean otherwise it won't look realistic. So the next thing that I did was just the, um, using the old um, dropping exposure and blacks technique again just making a selection of the entire background so that I can change the colors and the clarity and any other settings I like independently of changing the model settings. So I'm just gonna fast forward getting this selection as well just because it's more of the same stuff and um, it's not very interesting. So just fast forward that now and I'll meet you back when that's done. So now that that's done, what I'm gonna do is boost the clarity of the background just to make everything look more sharp. And then also I'm gonna add some saturation as well and change the color balance to be a little bit more green, a little bit more yellow, just to make the background more vibrant, more colorful, and fit in with the yellow and green color scheme that I'm having in this image. So that's everything I've done in Camera Raw. Now let's jump into Native Photoshop and finish off the editing process. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna to go to the Filter tab, and then I'm gonna to go to the Liquify tab. And basically I'm just going to um, beautify our model here a little bit. Um, just, you know, typical sort of photoshopping um, using the Liquify tool just to make uh, our model look a little bit more uh, slim and slender. And I'm just going to push in her cheekbones here as well. We're not really going for a realistic um, look in this image. We're just sort of uh, making her look a little bit more slender and model-esque rather than having a realistic depiction of how she would look. So now that I've stretched the canvas a little bit, I just need to use the liquify tool again to stretch back uh, those sides there that have just been warped off the canvas a little bit. I'm just gonna speed this up as well. Okay, so now that that's done, we're almost finished with our image. The next step that I'm going to use is um, just cleaning up some of the blemishes on our skin with the patch tool, just circling any imperfections I don't like and then dragging my selection somewhere on the face that is uh, smooth. And then um, basically what that'll do is it'll blend the two together and make any of those blemishes that were high contrast um, disappear. So I'm just gonna fast forward this bit as well, just cause it does take a little bit of time to get rid of all the imperfections. Just doing a rough example in this tutorial, otherwise, you know, this tutorial might end up being you know, 45 minutes long or something like that. So just gonna fast forward uh, my, uh, my rough patch tool uh, fix, and then we'll move on to the next thing. Okay, so now that we've cleaned up the skin, what I'm doing here is I'm making a curves layer. And then what I do is press Control I or Command I if you're on a Mac to invert that selection. And then I'm using a white paintbrush, which basically just shows where on the screen I want that mask to appear. And the highlight mask I'm using means that wherever I brush, you are getting some highlights on her skin. So once again, I'm just gonna explain that because it's a little bit complicated if you've not heard that technique before. I am going to a new curves layer and then I'm making a highlights um, mask, and then I'm using the brush tool on at the color white to then paint in where I want those highlights to be. And I'm just basically painting highlights where I would see highlights on her face just to make them more pronounced. It really accentuates the features of her face and it makes her cheekbones look higher, it makes her lips look fuller, basically just makes anybody more beautiful because you're pretty much just adding light to her face to make any part of her body more pronounced. And chiseled features 
generally speaking, are more attractive features. So when you're adding that dynamic to a face, it makes it, generally speaking, look more attractive. So the next thing I'm gonna do is the same thing again, but for low light. So I'm gonna make a shadows curve now and then press Control I again, or Command I if you're on a Mac. And basically now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint in all these shadowy areas of the model's face. Um, for the same reason, just to add a little bit more contrast to her face and make her features more defined. So there I was just adding some contouring to her cheekbones and then I'm gonna make her chin a little bit more refined. And her lips as well, make them a little bit more dark just to make them look fuller and plumper. And then I'm gonna add some more to her eyelashes as well just to make them look fuller and thicker as well as the eyebrows and a couple of other spots as well. So I'm just gonna speed up this process because it does take quite a long time to get this right and I'm just gonna do a rough draft here as well, otherwise the video will last you know, an hour long or something like that. So now that's been done, there's pretty much only a couple things left to do in the image and then it'll be finished. So the first thing I'm going to do next is I'm going to make her hair a little bit more fuller and a little bit thicker. So the way I'm going to achieve that is go to filter liquify and accidentally I'm going to click the curves layer, cancel the curves layer, click the appropriate layer and then do the whole thing again. And then the next step is to just plump out the hair basically by using the liquify tool to widen the hair and this will just make her hair look thicker and fuller and just make her look more beautiful in general. So I'm just gonna speed this up as well just because um, it took about 45 to 60 seconds and it's pretty uh, self-explanatory. And we'll move on to the next thing. And actually, that's the final step. So thank you so much for getting to the end of this video with me. Um, I'd love to see a link to the photo that you edited if you downloaded the raw file and followed along. Please leave a like if you did enjoy it and feel free to subscribe as well. I'd love to have you here and we'll be making a lot more content like this in the future. Once again, thank you very much for watching.